Good morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Steve. It's good to have all of you here this morning here, either in the sanctuary or in the parking lot, at home, where you might be either watching on YouTube or Facebook or listening on the radio on Cash 95.9 FM. Welcome. It's glorious that we can all be in God's house together, even if we're not all in God's house physically together. We know in spirit that we are together joined in God's house few announcements before we begin. First is that uh, if you desire to give, you can, uh, there's a giving location, a, a basket to, uh, to put your offering on the way into the sanctuary or as you leave. Also, if you are at home and you're desiring to give, you can either go online and click on the online giving app, um, Give Plus, which gives us the opportunity to, or gives you the opportunity to, to do that on your smartphone or you could go to the church's website and there's an online giving spot there or you could mail your offerings in. So for those of you who are at home, there's all kinds of opportunities or ways for you to continue to be a part of the ministry that's going on here at Zion Lutheran Church in Brainerd, Minnesota. Different things that are going on here in the next few weeks. Um, one is next Sunday, this uh, January 31st, following the 1030 service, we are having a voters meeting. At that voters meeting, we will vote on the uh, 2021 uh, budget for the year. So uh, if you are, uh, we would love for you to be here at that time for that. And then there will also be an update about the, the renovation that is taking place. I don't know if you noticed as you were walking in that there seemed to be something different down the hallway, and there definitely is some things that are different. The, uh, my office no longer exists. The old youth room or uh, room 1617 no longer exists. Jonathan's office, the DCE's office, no longer exists. And the office that was across the hall from my office no longer exists. And the purpose for that is to turn that into a larger fellowship hall so that we can do Bible studies upstairs and be properly social distanced and, and be able to take care of everybody. So it's kind of exciting. There's been a lot of work that's already gone on this last week to get things started and starting uh, tomorrow we'll have uh, more stuff going on that they'll start um, rebuilding that area and turning uh, that into a, a different place for us to meet so it's pretty exciting times for that also we have a thursday evening bible study that jonathan is uh, leading on zoom if you're interested in that contact him Starting in February, we're going to be having a couple more Bible studies during the week. Those are going to be in-person Bible studies. Uh, the first one will be on Wednesday mornings starting in February at 1030. Um, we'll be doing that um, just before Lent starts. So that uh, hope that is that if you're here for the 1030 Bible study, you can stay on through the, the uh, noon worship service for Lent. And then on Thursdays, we will be starting a men's Bible study at 8 a.m. In your bulletin, there is a flyer for uh, flowers that the, the youth in Sunday school are, are selling, so look at that. And uh, the last thing to point out, um, uh, other than when you came in, you got to see, you got to pick up the February calendar. There was also a new newsletter that, uh, that we've been working on because we've got a number of folks who are still at home and not able to be with us. So we, we wanted to make sure we were able to communicate with them as to what's going on here at the church. And uh, one of the things that is in there is that on February 14th Sunday, Valentine's Day, we are going to be having Jammy Sunday at church. Um, okay, that sounds kind of weird, I know. Um, from what I have heard from most people, from, from little kids, is that their favorite day to go to school is Jammy Day. And the one thing I have heard in the last eight months is, Pastor, I love being able to go to church in my jammies with my cup of coffee and sitting in front of the TV screen or the computer screen and watching church. So I thought, well, you know, we're all separated. We should at least be able to do one thing together. So Sunday, Jan or February 14th, we are going to do jammy Sunday. Now, of course, there's a few rules that we have to have. First is if you sleep in the just your birthday suit, not appropriate for church. Also, being Valentine's Day, you should not wear any special 
Valentine's Day sleepwear. But other than that, um, it should just be a fun morning. Bring your cup of coffee and wear your jammies, and it will be a, a day for us to reflect on us being together in our separateness. We begin our time of worship this morning by singing our opening hymn as it's printed on page two of your worship folder, O Christ Who Called the Twelve. and us on ways where faith transcends timidity, where love informs and hope sustains both life and ministry. O Christ, the Apostles, Lord, 
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are forgiven. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition together as his people. Let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For this time forth and forevermore, the Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. To make them sit with the princes, with the princess of all his people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised.
Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday after Epiphany is taken from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, uh, began doing a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 35. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present, of the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free from anxieties, the unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand out of respect to the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing together the Alleluia and verse. Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. 
And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for the sermon hymn, Lord, help us walk your servant way. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. From our gospel reading for this morning from Mark chapter 1, Passing along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. What was it about Jesus that caused these two fishermen to stop what they were doing? I've been out in the boat with a few of you, watching you catch fish while I can't catch many. I could think of lots of reasons somebody would do just about anything to me and say, follow me, and I would go, yep, and leave the boat because fishing and me just don't go well together. But for these guys, and then the next two guys, James and John, they were fishermen. That was their job. That was their livelihood. That is what they did as income. They caught fish and brought fish to the market and sold fish. They were fishermen. Those nets that they had were Expensive. Those were the tools of the trade. Their boats, those boats were necessary. They were tools of the trade. They were what were needed to do their job. If they would let them fall in disrepair, they couldn't do their job. They couldn't make money. So for them to simply leave their stuff, 
James and John left their father in the boat. Simon and Andrew left their nets and followed Jesus. What is it about Jesus that causes people to stop and do something completely different? There's got to be something about him that makes these guys, these fishermen, not religious leaders, fishermen. It wasn't as if they had been sitting in the temple for weeks waiting for a new rabbi to come up and say, follow me, so that they would follow him. These were fishermen. These were normal, everyday guys doing normal, everyday jobs to pay the bills. Just like us. Well, okay, Just like you, I'm one of those religious guys that kind of, this is what I'm supposed to do. School teachers or military individuals, electricians, farmers, leaving what you are doing to follow Jesus. What a huge sacrifice. What a huge sacrifice it was for these four and the other eight to leave what they were doing to follow Jesus. We too are called to follow Jesus. That's the message for today. That is what we sang in our first hymn, our opening hymn. It said these words. O Christ, who called the twelve to rise and follow you, forsaking old familiar ways for ventures bold and new, grant us to hear your call to risk security. And bound in heart and will to you, find perfect liberty. To risk security. What things in our lives are giving us our security? Is it our jobs? Is it our homes? Is it our families? Our health? What things do we take more time and effort or put more time and effort into than following Jesus. What gives us our security? I'm not telling you that those things are wrong. I'm not telling you that those things are bad. I'm not even telling you to stop doing what you normally do as a job and pack it up and follow Jesus. That's what Jesus said to the 12, and for those 12 individuals, that was their calling. For those who are pastors or DCEs or professional church workers, those were the calls that we have received from God to follow him with our lives in that specific way. But all of us have received the call. All of us, through the waters of baptism, have become children of God. Through the waters of baptism, we are a part of God's family. And in that family, he calls us to do some work. I think about our family and the different things, the different projects that we have going on around the house at different times, especially in the summer when there's mowing to do, or during the winter when there's shoveling to do. Oh, I could get up and do it all myself, right? Or I could make Liz go out and do it all herself. But as being a part of the family... The kids come out and help as well because that's what they do. They help. They hear the call. 
the being a part of family and they help. Sometimes they come out willingly. They see us outside working and they say, we should probably go out and help. And sometimes it's like pulling teeth. You have got to go outside and help. You have got to go outside and work. You've got to do some type of fair share in our family. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we too are called by God to follow him, to do our part. And for some of us, it seems easier. At least for me, it seems easier because this is my job. I know where I'm going Monday through Friday and Sunday mornings. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I get to talk about God and his love and grace on a daily basis. In fact, everybody expects it from me. They're pretty sure that somewhere in our conversation, it's going to get there. But what about you? God has called you also to follow him. And, and might that mean that you are called to share God's love and grace with family members and friends? Yes. Does it mean that you're called by God to live a godly, God-pleasing life? Yes. God has called us all to be his children, to live this life together. But I think as I look around the world around us, we have become complacent. It's become pretty easy for Christians around the world to simply, well, stay at home or not follow anymore. Because following is odd. Following is hard. Following is not what the world or Satan desires of us to do. He wants the opposite for us to keep our mouths shut, for us to live our quiet lives apart so that we don't need to infect the world with God's love and grace. The world doesn't need that. Just stay at home. And it becomes pretty easy to simply do that, to just come to church, sit, do the church thing, and leave and be done with it for a week. It's really easy. I know. I've watched people. And before I became a pastor, I, I did it too. I would go and I would do my church thing. And then the rest of the week, not so much. I called myself an active Christian, but the reality was I was just a Sunday morning Christian. I was just one who came and I did my time and I went home. I used to say all the time that I loved going to the 8 o'clock service so I could get it out of the way for the rest of the day. Get it out of the way. Whew. Got God done for the week. I look around the churches in our community and in our world, in our nation, and the number of churches that are closing because people just stopped coming, stopped being active, stopped being a part of what was going on. I, I look back to 1962 and 63 when prayer and Bible reading left the public schools and how Christians, some spoke and many sat back and said, well, it's really not that big of a deal. It's really not that important. We'll just sit and be quiet because we don't want to make a stir. We don't want to let people know where we stand. We don't want people to know that we're a part of the Christian movement. We don't want people to know because then we'll, they'll think that we're different. So I'll just do my Sunday morning time and be done with it. This last week we celebrated the 48th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. And when that took place, Christians sat quietly for the same reason. Since then, there have been demonstrations and discussions on both sides, but in those past 48 years, approximately 
63 million babies have been aborted. And we sit quietly and allow thou shall not kill to take place. I say this not for all of us to be political and for us to, to be up in arms. I say this because we all, pastors included, have found it very easy to just be church Christians. God calls us to leave our nets, leave those things that we find comfortable and follow him. Why? Because what we receive from Christ is so much more. Jesus came and suffered and died and rose again. I say that every week. Jesus came and suffered and died and rose again to take upon himself the punishment for our sins. I say that every week. You're all sinners, so am I. I say that every week. But the reality is that's who we are. And in God's love and grace, he looked at us and saw us in, a, in our sinful condition. He saw us in need of a Savior. He saw us hurting and broken and wounded and dying. And he sent his son to be our Savior. We have love to share. We have love, God's love, God's grace, God's peace, God's strength to share with our world. And it's got to start here. If we're waiting for the world outside to just pick up the idea, it's not going to. Because Satan is alive and active in our world. And he wants us to be separated. He wants us to be alone. As I was flipping through the channels the other day, I came across one of those Animal Planet type of shows. And I watched as a gazelle was eaten by a tiger. I say that because of this. Do you know how tigers catch gazelles? By separating them from the rest of the pack. By separating them from the rest of the pack. God has called us to be family, brothers and sisters, together, united. The world is trying to separate us from each other. The world and Satan in our own sinful flesh is trying to keep us separated. And in our separation, we become vulnerable. Vulnerable to not leave our nets. Vulnerable to not follow. Vulnerable to be consumed by this world, by our sinful nature. God wants us to live. He calls us brothers and sisters. He brings us together so that in this church, in this group, we can have life. And through that life, we can share that life and joy and hope and peace to a world that needs all of those things, just as we need those things. This whole COVID-19 thing has been painful, emotionally, on all of us. This whole last year has been painful, but this isn't a new thing. This is what Satan did in the garden by separating Adam and Eve from God. And in that separation, made it easy for them to fall. My prayer is that 
we find hope and strength and life in our risen Savior. That we hear his calling and follow him with our words, with our actions. Follow him through the power of the Holy Spirit to live boldly as his children. In our Old Testament reading for today, the story of Jonah, God calls to Jonah a second time and says, go to Nineveh, that great city, and speak out against it for its wickedness has come before me. He says the same to us. But Jesus said, love our neighbors. Love your enemies. So the best way to love somebody is not to not bring hope to them. To love our neighbors is to let them know that we are all in need of a Savior. And that God brings us true, eternal, daily hope through his Son. May God embolden us as we stand together, stand united as his family, stand side by side, not as a political movement, not as a social movement, but as a movement of God in our world, a movement of true love, helping our neighbors, seeing those in need and stepping in, giving opportunities for others to hear the message of hope. Because if we don't have hope, there is no reason to be here. But God in his love sent his son to bring us his true hope. May God give us the strength through his spirit. May he give us the strength through his son that we would boldly stand together and share his name, his strength, his life, death, resurrection with the world around us. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, You've called us all to live lives of sacrifice. Just as calling Peter and Andrew and James and John to leave what they were doing to follow you, Lord, you've called each of us to follow. And Lord, it's not easy. There are so many days or times we just want to do and be like everybody else. But Lord, You have called us to be different, to be about your true love, your hope. You have called us to live lives of repentance and forgiveness. Lord, we pray that you would truly bring us your joy, that we would be emboldened by it, your love, to proclaim love into our world that is so hurting, so in need of love, Lord, help us not to judge others for their sins. That's not our job, Lord. Help us not to put wedges in between people. But teach us to love your love. Draw us all closer that we may stand against the ways of this world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For faithfulness and urgency in the church, that as the world passes away, we may be bold to proclaim the kingdom of God come near in Christ Jesus, who does not desire the death of sinners, but that all would repent and believe the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick, hospitalized, for those who are struggling with all kinds of health issues, for Jay, Todd, Elaine, Isaiah, Dale, Galen, Joy, Sharon, Lori, John, Kevin, Jim, Doug, Kimberly, Ron, Kathy, Rob, Irene, Carol, Joyce, Kelly, Lil, Claudia, Barb, Gordy, Pastor Collins, Opal, Nancy, Lena, Deb, Walter, Devin, David, Yvonne, John, and Lorraine, that they would know your healing, they would know your peace, and that they would be able to sing praises to your name for this. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who celebrate this week, for those who have birthdays, be with Aiden, Mark, Ron, John, Shelley, Nicole, Isaiah, Kelly, and, and Carla. And for Barb and Roger as they celebrate their anniversary, Lord, remind us all that life is a gift from you to be shared together, Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for those who have gone through great losses in their lives. Lord, we know you are the God of forgiveness and the God of peace. We pray, Lord, that you would move in our hearts to receive your great peace, especially if there are things that we are holding on to, the pain and the guilt and the sorrow. Lord, release us. Bring us your true peace for this. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For President Biden and for all the elected officials of our nation, as they grapple with the severe challenges of our community, state, nation, and world, that they would be kept safe, that they would lead in love and peace, and that they would know your grace, Lord. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the shut-ins, for the doctors and nurses, for the, those who are residents at nursing homes, for the staff at nursing homes, for those who are struggling and dealing with COVID-19 on a daily basis, for those who find themselves in harm's way, that you, O oh Lord, would be with them, that you would protect and guide them and continue to remind them that we truly are in this together as brothers and sisters. For this, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are depressed, for the anxious, the burdened, the weary, that they would know your peace, Lord, that passes all understanding for this. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Klein Schmidt family at the passing of Jan's brother-in-law, that they would know your peace, Lord, that they would know that you are with them. For this, let us pray to the Lord. And for all these things, and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn.